So you guys will join me first in easy seated. And if you're already in easy seated, go ahead and bring your legs out. Scoot back some so you guys can see me. We're gonna reseat our easy seated if you're already there. So I hope this isn't frozen. I'm going to continue as if it is, but I just see Jennifer's face on my screen frozen. So hopefully you guys can still. You're not frozen. It. Okay, good. All right. Thank you, Jennifer. All right. So come back, put your legs out, maybe just stretch, maybe do a forward fold. Bring your arms behind your back, roll around your neck, and then cross your legs. Start with your hips, realize where they're at on the floor, square yourself up through your waist. Don't let yourself hunch over. Through your pelvic floor, up your center. We are gonna concentrate on this area today. So, can you guys see me okay? I need to scoot back some more. Try there. So this problem area right here is what we are going to be working on. Not necessarily with exercise, but, or movement in this area, but you're gonna get a workout there today. It's our sacral chakra. So, from our easy seated position, if you would like to, bring your arms above your head to heart center. Take a minute, remember your alignment, and Take a deep breath in through your nose. Hold. I'm sorry about that. Hold. And exhale. Before we really start, one thing that I want you to think of with your eyes closed while we're here, unclench your jaw if it's clenched, relax your shoulders. Think about everything going on right now around you. Maybe your dogs are around you. Maybe your children are at home with you. Maybe you're home alone and you're just thinking about others. None of that is important right now. None of that is going to serve you any good in yoga. We're here for ourselves. Take a few more breaths here. Be aware of what is grounding you on the floor. What is touching the floor right now? And on your next breath, try and focus that breath into this area, your sacral area, your hips, your pelvic region, anything below your belly button is what we're talking about right now. So on your next inhale, maybe just hold, and then that hold, push down with your sits bones and your knees and out through your mouth. One more. Open your eyes, bring your hands down. First, we're gonna start out in child's pose or tadpole, we call it in yin. Child's pose, you want to kiss your toes, your big toes together, bring your knees a little bit further out and hips width distance. So hips width distance is not this. It's two fists and it's a pretty tight two fists. So right here, Kiss your big toes together, bring your hips down to your heels. Slowly walk your fingertips out until you feel that deep stretch in your elbows. You go ahead and say, before we go any further, if anything hurts, stop. 
yoga should feel good. Yin should feel good. You might feel some release. You might feel some um, tightness or, you know, soreness, but it, it shouldn't be any more than you feel on a daily basis normally. If it does, stop. I have an injury right now on my left leg, so there's some poses that I can't do on my left side, so I'll just be doing them on my right twice, probably, maybe. But if anything hurts or if you're doing something that's pushing you past your edge, stop. So if this isn't comfortable, you walking your fingertips out, then don't. Just rest your hands where they can. You want to remember to keep your hips as close to your heels in this as you can while you're walking your fingertips out. Forehead to mat. And while we're here in child's pose, remember to breathe. And when you breathe, breathe deep so that your torso here lifts instead of just shallow breaths from here up. Breathe deep into your belly. Let your forehead relax on the mat. In through your nose, hold. Out through your mouth. While you're here, after your exhale, try and bring your hips a little bit further down. See if you can get your hips and heels to touch. Two more breaths here. From here, we're going to come back, bring our legs out from under us, slowly walk your hands up, Slowly bring yourself back to seated. We're coming to staff pose here. And this is something that I shared the other day um, when I did yin training with Dawn that I've always remembered it because it makes such a huge difference. So if you can't, if you don't like just sitting like this, you can get a pillow, um, a sofa pillow that's probably a little firmer than this one and or even your block and sit up here and it makes it easier for you to be able because we're going to hold on to our feet we're going to do a forward fold on our legs but when you're here also once you're seated don't let yourself slouch just sit up tilt your pelvis forward heels to the ground arms overhead Go ahead and look at your hands. Inhale real deep. Hold. And on your exhale, there's so much more space here. And you'll notice when we're in our forward fold, you'll be able to reach even further. So let's try it again. Inhale. Hold. And on your exhale, make sure your pelvis is tilted forward and lean forward. So you can hold the outsides of your feet while we're here. You want to get your nose, forehead to your knees. That's the goal. If you're not there, you'll get there. But if you want to do your toes to your wrists, like you would as if you were on your heels right now, standing up in Pashimochadasana, we're just doing or fold like this. This is called caterpillar in yin.
If you can't touch your toes, don't worry. Touch what you can. Maybe you're here and that's fine. Maybe you're here and that's fine. Wherever you're at is where you should be today. And that's what's important. So get there and we're going to hold this position. You want to feel wherever you are, this deep stretch in the back of your hamstrings, through your knees, all the way up in your glutes. And from your waist up, you want to feel this deep stretch in your spine, your thoracic spine, all the way through your lumbar spine, all the way up in your shoulders. I guess I said that backwards, lumbar to thoracic and then through your shoulders. And make sure that with your neck, when we're in this pose, if you can't get your head to your knees, that's fine. Just bring your chin down. Breathe. On every exhale, you want to try and flatten your upper body if you can so that you're not breathing so much with your diaphragm, you're breathing into your lungs. So it, you want this to flare out on your sides instead of this on your belly to flare out when you're breathing. So take those deep breaths, deep into your lungs. Your lungs go all the way down to where your ribs in. So try and get into that area. And if you need to come back up for a break, you can. Breathe. However you would like to do this, do what feels good. Remember to relax your jaw. Try and keep those feet flexed. A few more breaths. On your next exhale, we're going to come up very slowly. And you're going, you're going to stay like you are on your mat or you can turn, but we're going to do forehead to knee pose. Yin. So dragonfly, and these are just some gentle side stretches just to kind of warm up this area. So first we're going to start, once you're back up seated from your caterpillar, you're going almost like you would butterfly, but we're going to start on the right side. So fold your right knee in, bring your heel as close to your torso as you can. So as close to your crotch as you can. And try and keep both feet flexed in this. Now, once you've gotten that, wherever you're at, again, if you need to, this is one time when if you have a blanket, if you have a blanket, a small blanket that's folded, I always notice that one of my hips raises up in this. So on the side that's lifting up, put your blanket or even your block if you need to, to keep yourself level. And this, so you're going to bring right foot, right heel in to your torso as far as you can. And you're going to bring your left leg extended out as far as you can right now. Once you're here, check in with everything. Something already hurts, fix whatever hurts so that it doesn't have that pain in that area. You might feel a deep, deep stretch underneath here in your hamstrings. If you do, bring your foot closer towards center. It's a little bit too far out. So once you're here and your feet are flexed, check in with your hips. Make sure that you're sitting on both your sits bones. Tilt your pelvis forward, okay? Bring your arms overhead. 
slowly drop your left arm and bring your right arm over. And it's really easy for us just to want to slump over in this. Keep your feet flexed. If you can, use a block or a blanket to put your left arm on. Keep your right arm above your head. Keep that right knee down. And wherever you're at, whatever feels good, stay there. Don't push yourself. Remember to breathe. And bring your right arm down. Bring your legs together, shake them out. And do on one side, we do on the other. You bring your right leg out, bring your left heel to your torso, as close as you can. This is the leg I have that's injured, so if something looks wonky on me, just remember what we did on the other side. Keep your feet flexed. Check in with your hips if one's raising higher than the other. The one that's raised is the one that needs the help. So go ahead and put your blanket on the side that you might need that. Check in with your hips, line everything up, flex your feet again, and arms overhead. Look up, bring your right arm down in front of you. Remember, keep your tor torso straight and bring your left arm over as far as you can. The goal is to reach your toes. One day, keep your elbow above your head. If you can, look up at the ceiling. You should see the crease of your elbow here. Keep that arm flexed. Keep the feet flexed. Remember to breathe. Feel that deep stretch in our sides. Two more deep breaths. Flex your feet. Remember in this not to disengage your abs, keep everything in check. And exhale, on your exhale, bring your left arm down. Oh, bring both feet together in front of you, shake it out a little bit. Okay. We're going to go into the camel for this. For this, I recommend that you get a pillow. If you have a bolster, great. But for camel, and Ashtanga, this is camel. We're not going to go all the way into this unless it feels good. This is what we're getting ready to do though with the pillow. If you can't do that back bend, don't. This is how we're going to modify it. Have all these couch pillows, I'm gonna make a makeshift bolster. So you're going to straddle your bolster or your pillow like this. Okay, I'm going to turn to the side so you guys can see me. And if you have blocks to use, put one beside your left foot and one beside your right foot, tall ways beside you. Rebecca um, had in one of her uh, classes that was online, if you have a roll of toilet paper or a block, you're one of the few that has toilet paper right now, use that. Um, I'm trying to think what else around the house might be short enough for this. All I see is a can of Play-Doh, but I don't think that's a common thing in other people's houses. Make do with what you have, but if you can reach the ground or your heels, that's great. So once you're here, once you're straddling your pillow, check in with your knees. You want them to be more than hips width distance apart, but not all the way out to the sides of your mat. Okay, make sure that the tops of your feet are on the ground. If you need to sit down on your pillow or bolster now, now 
is the time to do that. This is also, once you're on this pillow or bolster, it's going to alleviate some of the stress if you didn't have this here that you would put on your knees. So if you have knees that are injured or bad knees, weak knees, you wanna use a pillow for this. So if you would like to, while you're here, we're just gonna reach back and hold our heels. And while you're here, or you're gonna reach back and touch your blocks if you have them there too, but you're gonna sit down in this. But tilt your pelvis forward, chest proud, and we're gonna lean our heads back. Check in with your shoulders, try and draw them away from your ears. So I guess this could also be a modified hero's pose, maybe. But sitting down takes a lot of that stress off of being able to thrust with your glutes and your lower abdominals here. But we're gonna sit here for a minute. So you should feel this in your calves. You should feel it in your legs. You should feel it in your spine. You should feel it in the backs of your arms and your shoulders even right here. So you're going to not push on your heels by any means, but you're gonna use your feet for support. You're lifting yourself with your torso, with your abs, your core, your pelvic floor, your chest, your spine, and your muscles that are all there. That's what we're using right now. So really you shouldn't have a whole lot of pressure sitting down on your legs. Two more breaths. One more. Slowly bring your gaze down, release your hands. Go ahead and remove your pillows or your bolster that you might have there. And we are going to slowly come back to child's pose or tadpole. This time, I bet you get your hips further, closer to your heels. Walk your hands out in front of you to where it feels comfortable. Rest your elbows. Place your forehead to the mat. And breathe. Gonna stay here for just a few minutes. And while we're here, become aware of what is touching the ground. Your fingertips, your forearms, elbows knees and shins, ankles, tops of your feet, what is touching the mat? And on your next breath, bring your hands up, just your hands and wrists, almost like a piano player. Walk your fingertips out just a little bit, just a tiny, tiny bit. Hold your breath there. Keep your wrists up. You should feel a stretch under your arms. Breathe out. Keep them up. Maybe walk them a little bit further this time. Keep your wrists up. Fingertips pressing down into the mat. On your second exhale, go ahead and pull your wrist back down. Bring your hands in child's pose, down pull to your sides. If you'd like, your palms can be up. If you'd like to 
bind your hands behind your back. If you just want to take it easy, go for it. Remember to breathe. You want to lay one, you know, one side of your face on the mat, feel free. Don't do your chin to the mat. You can injure your neck that way. Close your eyes. Relax your jaw. Check in with your shoulders. Draw them back from your ears. Check in with your hips. See how much closer they are now than they were earlier to your heels. Focus on what's touching the ground, what's grounding you. Slowly, going to bring ourselves up, but we're going to stay with our feet on the ground. So from here, slowly, once you get to your knees, if you can, lean over on your hands. Walk your feet under you. We're going to go and do, go ahead and do Malasana squat or goddess squat. So, however, and you can, if you need a block under yourself here, use it for balance to help you. We're going to be here for a minute. Whatever helps you to get into this pose, use it. I, did, I don't have a block in here, or I would demonstrate a little block. Put it long ways like this. You put it short ways to give you a little bit more balance that you would be lower. So from here, try and get your heels so that you can bring your toes out. Not too far. Again, you know your edge. You know where you can go. And then, we're going to gently rest our triceps, the fleshy part of the back of your arms, against our knees right here. Not our knees, I'm sorry. The fleshy part of your hamstring or your quadriceps right here. And you're just gently going to push until you can get your hands into prayer. Be careful, don't fall backward. So whatever keeps you in this pose, the block, the roll of toilet paper, whatever keeps you here. And when you're here, check in with yourself. Bring your pelvis so that it's tilted forward. It's real easy for us to underestimate our strength while we're here and dump forwards. So we really want to pull everything up. Again, if you need to close your eyes. The biggest thing, you guys, when you're in this pose, or any pose in yin, is that you never want to have joint on joint. So you never want your elbow to be pushing on your knees like this, because that's going to injure something. It's pushing against you where it's too much force. So you always want to try and keep flesh against flesh, and you'll find that that helps you get deeper into the asana or the pose that we're trying to do. Remember to breathe. If you would like to, while we're here, you can bring yourself up into a releve. I did it the other day. Let's see. And hold. Use your toes for balance. And down. Two more breaths. On your next exhale, we're going to bring our booties down slowly. Sit yourself down. 
can bring your legs out in front of you. Shake them out. Ooh. And bring both heels together. And try and bring your heels back closer to your torso or your torso closer to your heels into butterfly. While we're here, you're gonna hold on to your toes. You can again, use your block or bolster or blanket to sit on in this. You want to make sure that your pelvis is tilted forward in this. And while we're holding our feet, we're gonna breathe in through our nose, hold, and if you would like to, you can lean forward and put your elbows to the ground. Bring your nose, forehead, as close to the inside of your arches of your feet as that you can. If you're not there, you will be one day. Bring your elbows down to touch the ground. And whether you're realizing it or not, you want your feet to mirror each other. So while you're looking at your feet, are your big toes touching, your second toes touching, third, only known by piggies. So the one that had roast beef, not the one that stayed home, all the way down to the pinky one. Try and work on that if you can't think about anything else right now and how much you don't like butterfly that much, or maybe you love this pose. You want to try and keep your elbows down. You're gonna notice there's a deeper stretch on the insides of your thighs. Once you do bring your elbows forward. Don't force yourself, you know your limit. And again, yoga should feel good. So even if you're like this right now and just looking at me, that's fine. You're where you wanna be. Remember to breathe here. Keep checking in with your sits bones, your core, make sure that your pelvis is tilted forward and not back. Lean forward. Two more breaths here. And on your second exhale, walk your hands up. And if you would like to use your block for this, you can. You need to put it under your head. But if you get on your sides, or on your side, not on your side, I'm sorry, on your sit bones, let yourself gently come to the floor. Bring your knees to your chest and let your feet drop back down the floor where they're at. From here, check in with your hip bones. Put your hands on your hips. Tilt them forward. Keep your feet together if you can and drop your knees out to where you can. Again, you know your edge, you know your limits. And now we're in recline butterfly. And again, while we're here, check in with your pelvis, make sure that you keep that tilted forward. Your arms can be beside you. They can be left hand over heart, right hand on your belly, feel your breath. I have to keep my eye on my hips to make sure that I don't let them tilt back. Do what feels good. 
And while you're here, because you can't see them again, try and mirror those feet all the way down to your toes. And go ahead and push against both of those heels while we're here. Push with the balls of your feet. You might have to lift your toes for this. And notice the grounding that you get in your lower spine, your shoulder blades. It brings you down a little bit further, makes you a little bit more aware. And stay here. Just for a minute. Remember to breathe. Remember to try and keep your toes and your feet mirrored. Push against them if you can. If you would like to, you could even bring your arms over your head. Really check in with yourself here. How do you feel? If anything is hurting, adjust yourself. Or maybe you need to wait to the next pose. Be mindful of your alignment. Remember what is serving you right now. Take two more breaths here. And on your second exhale, go ahead and bring those knees together. And Bring them up to your chest and give them a hug. Rock back and forth and give yourself a little sacral massage. Take this time to do what feels good. From here, once you're done, go ahead and check in with yourself, see where your shoulders are, keep your legs above you like this, and bring both arms out to your side. Knees up, go ahead and flex your feet, and we are going to drop our knees to the right. Do a side stretch and bring your knees over. And once you're here, you want to look over to your left hand. Maybe wave at yourself, palms up. And if it's hard to keep that alignment, bring your knees closer up to your arm. I mean, even if you're like this, if that's what works to keep all that together, try it. Keep that left shoulder to the mat. Try and flex both your feet if you can. And breathe. Don't force that left shoulder down. Just sort of let your arm relax so that it can meet the ground. Want your 
palms to the earth. Slowly on your next exhale, you're gonna bring those knees back to center. Go ahead and give yourself a little back massage again. Rock back and forth. Keep those knees together, flex your feet. Bring your legs up to a 90 degree angle to start with. Look to your right hand and drop your knees to the left. Once you're here, check in with that right shoulder and make sure that it's on the ground. Look at your right fingertips, palms up. Remember to breathe. Try and keep your feet flexed. Relax your jaw. Relax your shoulders. Really let yourself melt into the ground right now with your shoulders. Two more breaths here. After your second exhale, bring your knees back to center. Go ahead and hug them in. And bring, them, bring your feet above your head. We're gonna go into happy baby. So once you're here, you're going to bring above your head, you're going to take your hands up between your legs, but the outsides of your feet are what, the out, or what your hands are going to grab. So you're going to go through both legs, essentially. While you're here, before we come up and all the way up and start pulling, check in with everything on the ground. Make sure that your shoulders are away from your ears. Make sure you can feel that flat part of your back on the ground and gently pull gently on the outsides of your feet and rock back and forth and be still. Close your eyes. Relax your jaw and your shoulders. One more breath here. On your exhale, release your feet. Let them meet the ground. Walk them out to the edge of your mat. 
Just like we did in child's pose, let your toes kiss and then just let them fall to the sides of your mat. Before we fully relax, bring your arms above your head. Interlace your fingers and stretch. And then bring your arms down to your side. Palms up, relax your head and your neck, relax your shoulders, focus on what is touching the ground. Focus on how you feel right now in Shavasana. While you're here, check in with yourself. If you're cold, grab a blanket. Really allow yourself to melt into your mat right now and relax. Stay there. Remember to breathe. So I had planned for this sequence to really focus on the sacral chakra. Like I said earlier, that's in your pelvic region, in your hips, and we store a lot of emotion there. So if anything was a little intense today, that's normal. And if you had any feelings come up, that's normal too. But we have to remember to be fluid in everything and know what our limits are and know what our edge is and know how far we can push ourselves before it's too much. I wrote down a little excerpt of a Margaret Atwood, um, the Penelope ad. And the element for the sacral chakra is water. And water does not resist, water flows. When you plunge your hand down into it, all you feel is a caress. Water is not a solid wall. It will not stop you but water always goes where it wants to go and nothing in the end can stand against it. Water is patient. Dripping water wears away stone. Remember that my child, remember that you are half water. If you can't go through an obstacle, go around it, water does. So in that, know that all your feelings, all your emotions, you have all those for a reason. And your true self could just be trying to find your happiest self in all those feelings. Think about things that we are resisting right now. And how we have to go with the flow. And how sometimes, even in yoga, when we do poses, force ourselves into it, and we might not want to, but then once we're in it, it feels so good. Let yourself be fluid. Check in with yourself. Check in with your breath. Slowly start to wiggle your fingers and toes. Slowly start to wiggle your wrists and ankles. 
your knees and elbows. Maybe move a little your hips and your shoulders. And whenever you're ready, roll to your favorite side. Stay there for a few breaths. And when you're ready, Come to easy seated. And arms overhead. And if you would like to, to heart center. <clears throat> 